As always, it is interactive talk. So feel free to ask questions. I will answer the questions immediately during my talk. Um, so just interrupt me or write something to the chat. Um, you are my modera moderator, so uh, you can also interrupt me at any time and read the questions. Maybe it is better. Yeah, sure, I can do that. Very cool. So you see my screen? Yes, we can see a screen. Yeah. Very good. So then let's start. Uh, I have a view slides because uh, usually this serverless causes confusion. And uh, this is why I prepared some slides, but go very fast. So uh, Airhex Industries is caused the <laughs> website by, um, by JCon Köln, actually. And why that? Because after the, my talk in JCon uh, Cologne, someone asked me, uh, are you working for the Airhex company? And, and is it big or not? And the, there is no company, it's just a website. And uh, immediately after the conference, I registered Airhex Industries as, as, as fun. And if you go there, you will find all the links rela related to GitHub, Twitter, Blue Sky, and YouTube Shorts and stuff like that. It's just a blank page with links, which points to the resources. It's fun. Okay. Um, uh, so I have fun with Java. That's, uh, that's the deal. And uh, I also have a podcast, which um, already, I think, 270 episodes almost. It's also fun. So I invite people to talk about various stuff related to Java usually. And uh, if you have any questions left, the first Monday of the month, I'm answering all the questions. This is also a long running show. And uh, what I really like is to look back 100 episodes back is roughly seven years. And I'm answering questions uh, or answering. I'm, I'm, I'm reviewing the old questions and uh, surprise most you know, of, the, of the questions are asked again all the time. So um, these are the shorts. So the, um, there's a daily Java shorts or uh, Java da daily um, uh, content. And why I did that? Because uh, in, yeah, per accident, I found that it's actually very easy to record a short. And I got lots of questions like, you know, why Java is so complicated, whatever. So I'm answering with a one or 60 seconds piece of code. So that's all. A Discord, if you like to join. So um, you can, this is actually the best if you if you like, reach me via Discord. And uh, oh, uh, there are um, workshops around the corner about AWS, a little bit more advanced topic, but uh, what I showed you today is the, somehow related to the second workshop. And the first, of course, just about security. So before we start, um, what I would like to show you is some motivation. So I spent all my time in projects with Java in the cloud. And why that? Because Java is actually extremely cost-effective. Cost-effective means it... Um, it means it is energy efficient, which is nice. Uh, usually, no one cared about the energy consumption until recently, right? Uh, there is an, an, an law um, on the horizon called LKSG, Lieferketten Sorgfaltenpflichtgesetz, or something like this. And everyone uh, is now concerned about CO2. But at the same time, Java is also very fast. And very fast means it comes after C, R, C, ADA, and Java. And if you compare it with Python or Ruby, they are 35 times uh, most, how to call it, they, 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 less efficient, right? So they consume more energy and are slower. Where Java doesn't do that great is uh, with RAM consumption. You can improve it with GraalVM or Mandrel. You can have um, a native compilation. But uh, for instance, on AWS, uh, Lambdas is not even necessary to do that because you have to buy CPU with memory, with RAM. So to get one CPU, you have to buy two gigs of RAM. And uh, so we have more, more RAM than uh, we can actually consume. So now um, motivation. So what's the motivation is? Why I'm doing, um, why I'm, I'm, I'm showing you this? Because I'm doing this almost, you know, 80% or 90% of my time in all projects um, since uh, pandemic, I would say why. I guess because of costs and also uh, many are assuming this is not possible with Java. And um, so what this is, this is the cost calculator for AWS Lambda running the entire month, two transactions per second, the entire month, day and night with uh, two gigs of RAM and you will pay 15 euros. So having said that, um, I would say most of the enterprise applications don't have such load so they will run maybe, I don't know, half a transaction per second, right? Because uh, you are working from nine to five and then at night nothing happens. 
So what means is, um, in most cases, uh, you can run actually uh, services for free. That's the deal. And um, so this is one of the reasons if, you know, uh, budget or money um, have, uh, I would say, um, if they are a concern. So if you if you, if you have, you know, to, to you have a limited budget, then serverless could be extremely interesting for enterprise apps. And some companies don't care about budget yet, then they don't consider serverless. So this is this is the the idea. So um, now, if you say I don't like uh, to have a lambda, I need because my workload is like legacy, and I have to, and for unknown reasons it doesn't work. So uh, the next option would be Fargate. As you can see, it is the Linux ARM one task per month. Is 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 um, it is uh, similar to uh, Kubernetes or to a Docker uh, with less hassle. And eight gigs of RAM, and you will pay it fifty euros a month, which is not entirely true because you will need two instances behind the load balancer. So more realistic would be one hundred fifty to two hundred euros per month. And uh, why is this less expensive than that? Because the AWS Lambda has a very precise cost calculation, or or how to call it, you only pay for what you use, and you pay for invocations. And this task have to run all the time, regardless whether you need them or not. Having said that, in su such in some High performance applications, uh, serverless becomes uh, more expensive than this, and this is actually what you have to find out. But the interesting part is, um, actually, it's the same Java source. You can run on Fargate or Lambda. This is actually the interesting part. Now, um, what does cost of a tiny EC2 machine? Is like machine you will pay eight euros a month for one machine with uh, two CPUs and two gigs of RAM. Um, so this is the the list amount. So it's just to put it in relation, so you will need uh, two machines, you know, in in a cluster that have something similar to Lambda, and you will pay more, 16, 16 euros. Now, and uh, as a side note, um, it, we have here RDS for Postgres. There are two CPUs and eight gigs of RAM, and you will pay without uh, backup or clustering 180 euros a month for a for a for a tiny uh, DB. So you see how much clouds can cost. Why why I'm talking here about costs? Because in in my opinion, uh, cloud architectures without considering the cost don't make any sense. Because if I would have uh, unlimited budget, what I will do is I will order the largest possible EC2 machine and run an FA and, and have fun with it, right? Uh, starting Project Loom or whatever on it with uh, on 100 of, of CPU. So um, the entire cloud only makes sense if you consider budget. If you have unlimited budget, no one cares, right? Okay, and um, just, you know, this is usually a joke question. I ask the attendees in a in-person conference, you know, what what is this? And this is Raspberry Pi, and if you compare the Raspberry Pi specs to the um, to the Postgres specs, you will find that the Postgres is actually smaller than Raspberry Pi. By the way, uh, I don't know whether there are any questions in the chat. If there are, I'm happy to answer them immediately. So uh, now, serverless for enterprise. Um, th there are the two significant slides, and uh, in in a workshop on a conference, I tried to explain to Java developers serverless, and it took me two hours. And I still got questions. So then I found, I, I said, okay, how to compare serverless to already existing technologies? And this is my attempt. So what it is, is this is an old, um, I would say, white flight JBoss application, how 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 it would look, look like. So we have here the Apache HTTP server. So it's like, you know, before Nginx, it was an old HTTP server. And what you usually did, you installed mod JK, mod proxy, or mod cluster there as a plugin. And you said, okay, in the JK workers, usually this was the name or configuration, you specify slash, I don't know, uh, my dynamic app slash star and uh, Apache knew, okay, I'm I'm not responsible for this URI and I forward the URI to an external server. And this is what um, mod JK was. Um, I think it was Jakarta Connector back then. And it was used by Tomcat and by most Glassfish, Whitefly, by most application servers. So mod JK was mostly um, Tomcat and Glassfish and Cluster, mod Cluster, and mod, uh, mod Proxy was, uh, I think, from JBoss back then, from Red Hat. Okay, now, what's the difference to AWS Lambda or Azure Functions? So uh, not a lot. And um, actually, this is the difference. So what we need in here, we need a kind of H HTTP endpoint. And this can be um, VPC lattice. This can be uh, uh, HTTP uh, REST and um, REST API, HTTP API, or sorry, REST API gateway or HTTP API gateway. 
or it can be application load balancer, or it can be function URL. So there is a thing which uh, waits for HTTP events and um, and 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 forwards the events to the backend to the Lambda. Exactly the same what we mentioned with the HTTP app um, uh, with the Apache. And um, so what happens here? We have to configure this and exactly the same configuration. So we have to use you know so-called proxy integration. So you're saying slash star intercept everything and forward everything to Lambda. The main difference to 20 years ago is that the event is not a binary event rather than a JSON event. The Lambda runtime gets the event and passes the event, wakes up the Lambda. So there is where the cold start or warm start happens. And um, and yeah, the data is received and um, yeah, and then you can you can you, you are implementing the business logic and um, and you are returning the the result. So not not a lot of difference. Uh, and the only difference to to Whitefly to this is that the Whitefly every request was a thread, and in the Lambda case, every request is a process. So if you, if I ship the Lambda with one CPU and I have 100 parallel requests, I 100 CPUs are working for me. And on the Fargate case, uh, there will be 100 threads on two CPUs. So this is the difference. So I would say Lambda scales linearly. If you do nothing, usually, if you uh, set up an account, you can run 1,000 lambdas in parallel. So the more you run, the more expensive it gets. But um, yeah, this is um, scalability. OK, so, um, so what it means is, Serverless is not a magic uh, magic solution which is free or almost free. What it for me, what what it is, it is the perfect auto scaling. This is this is what it is. So you pay you pay exactly for this what what is used behind the scenes, and um, and this and you get free staging. Oh, this is a huge. So um, I would say the biggest advantage for me of Lambda is or Serverless. Every developer gets a production environment for free which is un not possible with Kubernetes, for instance, because you will pay for per developer, you will pay um, roughly 100 euros for the control plane for an empty Kubernetes cluster, right? So what you will usually would like to do is to set up multiple Kubernetes plus, uh, clusters, <laughs> clusters, <laughs> clusters, and use our namespaces to separate them, but this is exactly not production. And, and in Lambda case, you get, you know, uh, you get um, isolation, complete isolation and product, I, uh, um, environment identical to production. This is what we actually always wanted to have in Java. I remember an old article in Java World is to say um, that uh, m lots of projects are failing because the development environment is not identical or not even similar to production environment. And now, no, 20, 20 years later, we have the unique opportunity to do so. So um, AB deployment is there, rolling updates is there, so everything is built in without load balancing load balancer and without single point of failure. A side note as well, lambdas are also very secure because it is not shared, they're not running on Docker container. They are just started and stopped um, in, in, in a process, so firecracker. Okay, any questions? No questions. So somehow, uh, lazy audience. So Lisa, is there no questions? Uh, if there's no questions, Lisa will have to ask a question, right? So this is this is the deal. So and this is the URIs, you know, the the references. What I what I what I use. You get the slides. You can look at this afterwards. So thank you for your attention. Because now I would like to open my uh, not IDE, my uh, terminal. So um so first um there was infrastructure as code. What what is this? So um I would like to show you something. So set up a CDK uh, project and now call it JCon. What what do um what we can do? Let's say table the JCon table, and I have the uh, project here. And the interesting part is it is uh, it only depends on AWS, which makes sense because I ship to <laughs> the AWS, so I don't like to have any external dependencies. If I'm on Asia, I'm using Asia Bicep, which is also an uh, Asia invention. So no surprises here. It's exactly the same behavior for years. So if we use, you know, uh, some technology we use Glassfish and right hand technology with Wildfly, right? So we try to you know to be consistent in, if we pick the, the the vendor. So this is um just Maven project, regular Maven project, and uh, what happens here? We have a CDK app, and uh, so this is JCon table is the name. This is project, and by the way, the app is already available here on my GitHub. So it has to be wait a second. So you have to wait, right? Where is it? Uh, I opened actually before the show multiple windows. Is it here? 
If not, I can... Oh, here is it. So this is the uh, AWS CDK plane. So this is the reference, and I just clone it behind the scenes so I can do this. This is actually old one. And um, yeah, and let's try some to do something with it. So this is the app, pure Java. There's a CDK stack. And what I can do is I can say, I would like to have a table. And this is DynamoDB table. And say, this is the builder. And create this and i have to name it jcon uh, table and say i would like to have uh, the billing mode is interesting so um this is serverless table just to show you how infrastructure as code is working we will deploy a lambda in a second but this is part of the infrastructure and this is billing mode um billing mode uh, is this on demand or provision pay pay per request this is what we like to do is and um so it means no traffic no costs and I think table name, yeah, table name, let's say jcon, jcon table, and then say build. And what I get back is a proper table. So, uh, and why this is important? Because with that, I can create my infrastructure on deployment and I can associate the table with my Lambda and all the permissions and security is set. So that's the deal. So what it means is with a little bit of luck, um, what I could do, ah, uh, not a lock, uh, it won't work because what I forgot is I have to set the uh, partition key and the partition key is like a primary key and I have to specify that and it has to be uh, name is uh, partition key, PK, this is not primary key, it is partition key and it has name, uh, oh, has name as type Type is string, attribute type is S, and it's it is string which becomes an S build. So right, and I will skip the sort key. It is actually optional, but it is not optional in all projects. We are using the sort key because we are usually mapping more complex objects to table than hello world. So okay, now if I run it, don't ask, deploy, don't ask. So if I run it. Uh, and yeah, okay, this is a Node.js warning. Uh, this is, uh, it says, please delete Node.js and use Java. Not just kidding. So, um, and, um, so it takes a little bit, but then I should see if there is no mistake on, on DynamoDB table in my account. And, uh, why it is so exciting? First, it doesn't cost me anything, so I can have you know in every account a table. And the second is, uh, thing is, if I would show you the Postgres RDS, it will take you know half an hour, and I will get an empty uh, database without um, yeah. Now it happened an empty database without any additional uh, tables or permissions, and this is completely set up and highly scalable. And um, so let's see. I don't even know whether. The tables are visible here. So there is no, then I open later my account. No, there is no DynamoDB, I think. Um, yeah, but um, they are, wait a second, AWS DynamoDB list tables. Let's see. Oh, perfect. So there is the JCon table. So um, now it is provisioned. And uh, this was Pirates and Katowice was uh, other workshops. So we did some serverless workshops. Uh, and uh, yeah, hex table is for my ex. So we have now a JCon table. So this was how the um, infrastructure code is working. The cool story is, so I never do this with the stack. We, we build a nice builders and uh, we can just say Maven um, deploy and Maven will package the jar and push it to your Maven repository. So uh, the code becomes becomes uh, reusable across teams, which you can save a lot of time. And by the way, just compare you know the this with let's say Terraform, where uh, um, I think with Java you write significantly less code. And um, by the way, if we have here, uh, I don't have the lambda here yet, but what I can do, I can say table grant uh, full access or read and or a stream read is like uh, the. Uh, change data capture and gr gr uh, grant uh, write data. And I can, for instance, if I had here the function, I could already give the function here and the permissions and roles would be set up in, in the background. Any questions? No, I would have to say in the prior JCons, there were more questions. Maybe uh, the problem is I, the first time I'm showing more code, last time I focused more on slides. So maybe next time I will show you more slides again, this which causes, generates more questions. So um yeah
Lisa, no questions because in the chat there is something, but I don't like to click on it right now. Moderator? I hope the name of the moderator was Lisa, right? No? Yes, yes, that's correct. <laughs> ah, very good. So uh, um, are there any questions? Not yet, not so far. I'm okay. Afraid. So now, what happens usually? So um, I have here, I would like to create an, a stock application and call it uh, JCon World. Uh, maybe it's dangerous because JCon World is already here. So let's say JCon, uh, QJCon. QJCon, QCon would be a little bit dangerous, but QJCon is okay. So let's do this. So the application is created and now open the application, QJCon, and um, let's see what happens. So this is... Um, a small micro profile application and um what i would like to do is to speed up the deployment is to remove the unit tests they are just not necessary in serverless serverless never can fail right so we don't need tests and um so we have it and now let's take a look at we don't need a docker at all so um and uh, let's see what happens so we have here greetings which looks good hello and um yeah what i could do immediately right so i could here go here and say um maven quarkus dev and it will launch quarkus and i can run the um the code and let's maybe it's better to open it in another terminal and say curl localhost localhost 8080 so i get a quarkus and with hello i get the hello and it shouldn't be reactive it should be serverless. So if I rerun the code, it should be serverless. So it is working. So now if I say Maven package, it will create a um, production package of Quarkus. So, uh, but there's still tests, okay. Uh, source test Java. I think I forgot this. So now do it again. And um, it should create a production package. Somehow persistent it tests. Uh, source test Java. Maybe, in, uh, wait a sec, Maven clean. It was never that hard to delete unit tests. Wow, okay. So this was almost like, you know, a zombie test. So now we clean the unit tests. And uh, we have here Target and, uh, and Quarkus app. And there is a Quarkus, and here somewhere there is a Quarkus app and Quarkus run. This is what I search for. So uh, what I can do is I can say Java minus jar target, and then Quarkus app, and Quarkus run, Quarkus run, and it starts Quarkus. So this was the start. So so perfect, right? Now, but I would like to deploy the thing here as Lambda. So how to do that? And um, so the only trick is I have to add an extension and I would like to do it by hand. So this POM XML, now this rest assured is not needed. So AO Quarkus, let's resume this, uh, resume, reuse this. And uh, it was something with HTTP. Hopefully I will find it. HTTP. Quarkus, uh, no funky, no vertex. Quarkus Lambda, HTTP. Very good. And the scope is not test. And say always and just now do the package again. And with the package, if it works, we should see here function.zip. And this is just a zip. So, and uh, the cool story is I can st still run Quarkus in dev mode. So I can run it here and again test it, debug it without any strange, you know, local dev. De so this just works as always worked. Even actually, in all my serverless project, we don't even need a Docker locally installed. So there's no Docker, no test containers, just no plain old Java as it was in 1997 or 1996, even right. So, um, so still no questions. So very patient audience. So now what I have here, I have here this. Uh, Q, uh, QJCon uh, set up uh, AWS fun um, function URL CDK only AWS project. So this is another script, and what it does is it um, it copies. Uh, so this is it copies. Where is it? This one. So I'm using right this one. It is just copied, 
and I will close that. I can also almost close this. Okay. And now call it uh, QCon, uh, no QCon, QJCon, of course, QJCon CDK. So I have it now. And what this is, this is the deployment of the Quarkus. So what I like to show you that is actually absolutely possible um, uh, to pick an existing Quarkus application and run as Lambda, right? A micro profile application. So, and um, so what happens here? This is uh, a little bit nicer CDK. What you can see here, I have here uh, a builder. This is a function name. Is uh, let's call it uh, Jcon. Jcon and uh, how to call it? Uh, hello, or without service? Without service is a good name. So, and this is just a placeholder because uh, I have just to point to the existing uh, lambda. And this was uh, this was QJCon. This is the body. Okay, so there is QJCon. So what it means is if I go here, and by the way, what I can also specify, I can say I would like to have with uh, half a CPU, one CPU, two CPUs. This is actually, it looks more like what I'm doing in production. So um, I can say with one CPU and uh, what I also would like to have, uh, let's say configuration with map uh, of, and there is uh, a message and say, Hello, Jcon. So, and this is not necessary. And we can use Java 21, by the way, on Lambda. So we have this, hello, Jcon, and uh, looks good. So the only thing I would like to do is here in my Quarkus, I would like to uh, make it a little bit more complex. So what I like to do is uh, introduce a greeter because I don't have a better name for it. On Lambda, everything is application scoped, application scoped. And uh, what I like to do is to inject uh, a config config property. And this is a uh, message. And uh, I think we use also the name message. Name message. And uh, just go with default, uh, not configured. Configured. Wow. <laughs> configured. OK. And then uh, string. Um, Greeting and just return that. Return this. Why greetings? Because Quarkus ships with greetings. So that that that's all. So what is this? Not needed. So uh greetings. And here I can inject that. Inject and uh what? Uh the greeter. Greeter. And then this greeter. There, there should be one question because there is uh, two messages in the chat. Lisa, what's going on in the chat? Uh, greeting. Mm, there you is one not... question in the chat. Yeah, very um... good. You're not paying attention. You are the moderator. You know, you should <laughs> immediately stop me. So go okay, ahead. okay, I will. So I thought you wanted questions at the end, but okay. Um, no, the no, code no. seems to be uh -huh. okay. The code seems to be specific to AWS. Do you have experience with Google Cloud functions as well? Uh, no Google Cloud function, so I never use Google Cloud function. I have to admit, I'm, uh, but uh, Azure function and Azure functions <laughs> and uh, and uh, AWS Lambda, and um, yeah, this is what I have experience with. And uh, their code is not at all uh, AWS specific. The deployment is AWS specific, has to be, and but it's always even if you use Terraform or Pulum, it always AWS specific. Or Asia specific. So in my eyes, there it is no, uh, there is no. It's impossible to abstract from the cloud, right? So you could you could try, but yeah, you will lose a lot of things, right? So that that is basically it. And why AWS? Because AWS was first with the lambdas, and this is how it started. And and, and all the others providers are catching up. And uh, AWS is unique with the uh, with the architecture. And by the way, what what I, I don't show today, if I deploy it right now. I will use. I will not use the crack or snap start, so you will see the raw performance. But thank you for the question. So um, yeah. So I don't have any experience with Google Cloud Functions. So uh, very good. So uh, I will. So wait a second. So I will have to package this first. I forgot whether I actually did it. So this is built. 
And by the way, the code is not even Lambda specific. I could actually run it or bare metal in for tests. Um, let's see. Maven uh, Quarkus Dev. So this is no AWS at all. And so it starts now. And now I can uh, go here and say curl. And you see not configured, which is clear because in Lambda it is going to be configured and locally there is no environment. But I could I could just debug it already. Very good. So um CDK, QJ, con, CDK. So, and build and deploy, don't ask. And usually I get a question, how how how, how um, complex is the script here? And uh, to answer the question, because I get all the time, I would like to show you this. So I have just two IDEs. Usually I have one project, but what I wanted to do at the conference is to show you that it um, you, you have a corpus and afterwards we can deploy it. Usually... Uh, what I have, I have a template where you get everything at once. So we don't do this usually, but at conferences, it's nice to to see, you know, a stock, st um, a, a stock microservice on Quarkus, which can be deployed as AWS Lambda. Okay. So now this is deployed and what's about the script, right? So this, this is the script and that's all. It's just a Maven and deploy all. That That's all. So this is a stock Maven project, which creates a JSON, which is cloud formation compatible. And this is pushed push to the cloud. So the deployment takes one minute, 70 seconds. And okay, now it was faster. So it was demo effect, usually it's a little bit slower. And um, so, and now we can see how well stock micro profile application without GraalVM, without anything, without Snapstart, nothing, just a plain, plain Quarkus micro profile application performs. So let's go here, curl T and make it run, and uh, what was it? Hello, I think. So this call T is just my macro to measure the performance. So this is the very first call, which is absolute cold start. So uh, you see it was three seconds, and now the uh, upcoming calls are significantly faster. Now the question is how expensive this is. You saw my um, uh, my estimation was like, uh, what, I think 100 milliseconds, two transactions per second all the time. And, uh, and by the way, let's see whether it's actually working, right? So if I do this, Hello, Jacob. You see, so this the message was was changed and um, was set up by Lambda, and we see this. Okay, now let's try to find it in the environment. So uh, CloudWatch logs, and this is without service. This is right. This is the log, and what you see here. Let's see. We see that the uh, very first call uh, was two and a half seconds. So there was also um, a network round trip. 1,700 um, mega max is roughly one CPU, a little bit less than one CPU, but I only get billed for 230 milliseconds. And you can see all um, subsequent calls um, is roughly 10 milliseconds. So uh, what it means is that actually uh, I was very pessimistic with the cost estimation, right? Of course, it gets worse if we uh, call external database, which blocks, but in DynamoDB, we get more or less guaranteed requests, um, request, um, uh, response times of, I would say, sometimes even below 10 milliseconds. Um, okay, this was a live deployment with Java 21 mm -hmm. and the recent Quarkus. Uh, um, this is Java 17, strangely. Uh, this was... Um, Adam, we have another question, if you're interested. Oh, very good. And I'm very interested in questions. Go ahead. Okay, amazing. <laughs> um, why are applications in AWS Lambda application scoped? Does that mean that your microservices have to now be converted to application scope beans? A very good question. A request scope doesn't make sense uh, because if you think about this, every request can potentially start a new Lambda and restart the Quarkus. So if you wait two minutes and call it again, it will restart the Quarkus completely. And it cannot happen that two requests will meet in one Quarkus. So it's always a complete start. And therefore, application scope is more efficient. Okay. And what I forgot to migrate the example to Java 21, but I will do it after the show. So we push because this was like just for conferences. Uh, I not, don't use the template for my projects. I use uh, something else. Very good question. Next question, Lisa. There is no more question oh. than that. Sorry. Oh, no problem. Then you have to think about one question, Lisa. Okay. So we have. Um, so now I would like to show you what happens behind the scenes because uh, why it is so fast because Quarkus eliminates reflection and uh, or 
Quarkus deploys at build time, so eliminates reflection and uh, and uh, you know configuration parsing at build time, so we get at runtime just hardwired bytecode. And the cool story is what Quarkus can do: it can parse the JSON events, um, JSON events without reflection, and this is why it's so fast. And this is actually what I'm doing, you know, the last uh, five years with you no know, uh, different variants. And um, yeah, now uh, to explain you a little bit more uh, what happens. So um, I would like to set up another project. And for this purpose, I would just like to clone the repository. And uh, this is not that. It is, uh, wait a sec, it should be here. This is also not this one. Uh, this is this one, okay. So now what I would like to do is to clone the project, git clone live. Life is life, and uh, AWS Java, AWS Java function URL, and uh, show you what happens here. So this is another CDK project. In this particular case, I'm not using Quarkus. I'm only using a Pojo. And this is why at the beginning of Lambdas, I never liked them, because uh, this was the typical AWS example, is you get the HTTP event here, which is usually JSON, and now do something with it, right? So, and it looked for me always like serverless. It's like, you are all crazy. I, I will not implement, you know, a switch case <laughs> to see get post requests and on get this parameters, I will call that one. It is just too crazy. So what I, um, but in Quarkus case, there is no difference to my old Java E code. I can just pick a Java E code and run as a Lambda. Why are we doing this? Not because it's fun, it's just because it's cheap, right? So th that's the reason. So, okay. So now let's take a look what happens here. So there was the Lambda, and uh, I would like Adam, to Adam, I have this. a question, actually. Very good. For yeah. you. Go. Yeah. <laughs> actually, it's not mine. It's uh, from Christian Hummer. Um, yeah. Hi, Adam. Is DynamoDB less expensive uh, than managed Postgres, or why do you use DynamoDB? Yeah, we use DynamoDB. So the, the least expensive uh, persistent is S3. We're actually using in project as well. Um, the problem with S3 is there is no good you know, search story and every call takes 30 milliseconds. So you cannot just really you know, load 100 keys in a, in a request. DynamoDB um, supports search on keys. And uh, DynamoDB, you pay per request. Under heavy load, uh, DynamoDB can become really expensive. So under heavy load, I mean heavy loads are several thousand transactions per second. But you will have to size Postgres as well. So I expect that if you know what we are doing, at the very heavy load, several thousand transactions per second, maybe you can run Postgres more cheaply. The interesting part is there are no fixed costs for DynamoDB. So in most my enterprise projects, we run DynamoDB completely for free. But uh, for in, in, in enterprise project for Postgres, you will pay at least 500, 600 euros per month. So I would say in boring, crowd enterprise project, you get DynamoDB for free because there's not much load. But if you have heavy load, you have to perform the calculations first. So this is actually the job of cloud architect, you know, to look at the cost first and then suggest a solution. Because if you just do lift and shift and, you know, migrate your Kubernetes cluster to the cloud, the chances are very high that you can you cannot pay for it, right? <laughs> or it is far more expensive than, than you actually uh, think. I hope... I answered the question properly. Lisa, are you happy? Yes, totally. <laughs> yeah, very good. <laughs> Wonderful. Cool. Thank you very much. There is another question. Yeah, very good. Go ahead. A question regarding performance. Um, mm -hmm. If every call to the Lambda can be a fresh start, does it mm -hmm. still make sense to use prepared statements anymore to speed up SQL queries to example given Postgres SQL? Uh, you, you get another problem with lambdas because, uh, yeah, you can use prepared statements uh, and every call is uh, is only on, on cold start if there is no traffic because um, so my measurement in Quarkus, every, in Quarkus in Frankfurt, every 70 seconds, uh, the, the, the lambda gets shut down. So uh, you get another problem with connection pool. You cannot just run, you know, 100 connections per lambda because we have 10 lambdas in parallel. You get 1,000 connections talking to, to Postgres. So if you're running Postgres, take a look and or MySQL, take a look at an RDS proxy. This is additional service which multiplexes the, uh, the, the connections. But in the cloud, if you manage to be uh, faster, you pay less. So it always makes sense to optimize performance if budget, you know, is an issue. 
if you have, I, I was uh, an insurance company and uh, the first day they talked, this was uh, actually this year, and it told me um, it doesn't matter because we have unlimited budget. So it stopped talking about, you know, the strange stuff here, just, just you know, deploy Kubernetes and here we go. So, okay, in this particular case, it's really hard because it's the same like I get, you know, to 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 car dealer and uh, and I have I can spend, you know, 10 millions. So what I can do, I don't know, I can buy, you know, Ferrari or Bugatti, but I actually just need my, my, my car to go shopping, right? So this is like crazy, crazy talk. So, so if budget is an issue, every optimization is uh, is important. Okay, so I have here the um, another question. Just interrupt me because this is just yes, no yes. addition okay. additional explanation. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Sorry, I <laughs> I just thought we have another question. Very good. Um, Go ahead. In the past, vendor specifics were hidden because of Java specification slash slash API. Do you think it's something we need for cloud vendors as well? So we don't need to learn vendor specific APIs or SDKs? Yeah, the cool story is what you see here. Uh, I don't learn anything more specific, right? So I'm, I'm, I mean, infrastructure as code is just Java. And if you know um, what happens here, I'm. what you have to know is I need memory. I have to know where the zip is. This is what I'm writing right now. And then I deploy. This is all you have to know. And if you look at my code, this is Jakarta MicroProfile code, which is even Quarkus independent. So I could run it on Micronaut. I can run it on Helidon. So I'm we, we are already using standard here. So it already happened in, during the talk. I hope I answered the question. This is infrastructure as code. If you think about that, I don't think Terraform is the solution because Terraform is the same syntax, but every cloud comes with own resources, which are completely different. So you learn only, you know, uh, if we start off home, you will have to actually learn how for loops and if statements are working. And 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 then you learn exactly nothing because, you know, in Asia, all the resources look completely different to AWS. Very good. Build and deploy. Don't ask again. Another question, Lisa. No, and at I... the moment not. Very good. So I will deploy an, an, an the, the, the simplistic example to show you how it works. And this is like a Pojo Lambda without Quarkus to say, okay, we don't have to use Quarkus. We can just use Pojo Lambda, but then we'll have to parse, you know, the HTTP event by ourselves. And um, so what's my opinion about all this? I would say if you go to the cloud, then go really to the cloud or stay on premise. So um, it's nothing, you know, wrong with stay on premise. You get the most cost effective solution if you run your data center properly. But if you go to the cloud, I will really use the cloud and not, you know, deploy an, 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 I don't know, legacy Docker containers uh, in the cloud and call it cloud native and pay a lot, you know, it is it is, it is is just not, not I would say, there are cases if you need to know HR or dis uh, disaster recovery or some, something like this, but uh, usually you can do better than, you know, redeploying your old applications to the cloud. Okay, so now um, I have here a different URL and uh, cold start again. JCon. So this is um, a little bit faster. You see, it is uh, one second. So this is also Lambda. And let's see what happens here on AWS. So we have here CloudWatch, and this was the explanation log group. And we, if we take a look at that, you see um, this was uh, Java 21 this time. So this time I've used the proper runtime. Back then it was 17. I will upgrade that. And you see that the cold start happened. Um, so what is, you see the method was get, this was the headers, the raw path was JCon, there was no body, and then the request request ended. And um, if you would like to know what you are paying, we, we have to search for build. And you see here the build duration was 55 milliseconds and the cold started was half a second. So, and if we look here, so this was build durations, three milliseconds, three milliseconds, three milliseconds, I would say. Java is incredibly fast. So you will only pay for three milliseconds and we get we get millisecond precise calculation actually. And um, so again, why I'm showing you this example? Because this example, I just get the HTTP event. I'm parsing the event by myself, which I never do in projects, but to, to give you an explanation. So what Corcus does, Quarkus does exactly this. It, it reads this event and invokes with this information, without reflection, my old JAXRS code. And this is the entire trick. So another question, Lisa. I think there is one, right? Yes, we do have one. But I suggest that you read it because it is coding language. And um, yeah. Coding language. I don't, I don't know if it makes sense if I read it. Um, 
the question itself is okay, but the example. Ah, is it is it possible to have uh, uh, is it possible to have multiple endpoints under the root? Uh, it's not only possible. This is the default. So we have usually several hundred such uh, endpoints. So uh, we can have as many HTTP endpoints as you like because uh, again, what Quarkus does, it parses the event, and in JaxOS, I I can have as many endpoints as you like. So in this particular case, there can be only one, but in the uh, Quarkus case, in the other case, uh, wait. It was, I think, the JCon, who JCon case. If I go here, I could have absolutely another uh, endpoint called uh, JCon by Java, and it, it can be uh, application scoped usually, and the path has to be different. But this will work, so I do it all the time. So uh, this is uh, without that, it would be no, you wouldn't be usable, right? But no kidding, there is almost no difference to you your micro profile microservice you can just use it and with quarkus you save money because it eliminates you know all the dynamic behavior and the cool stories i don't even have to use graal vm on or mandrel i could but as you already saw I, I would already pay for three milliseconds invocation right so i mean i don't so with mandrel or graal vm it would be even slower because they don't perform dynamic optimizations so this would be, uh, I'm just writing uh, goodbye, not goodbye, goodbye. So next time I will have to activate ChatGPT, right? So to reduce the typos. So this one and uh, media type should be text plain. No, um, it's media type text plain. And this basically it, import import already imported so if i do maven package and then redeploy the application here this is should be a cdk cage cdk and what what happened here ah produces produces and uh produces and yeah this is why you should never code on conferences so um ju just package this so now it should be green it is and then i could just deploy it and we get two endpoints so if there are any questions left i would like to answer all the questions first but um one minute later we have the answer so there EDD. are no questions left at the moment. So what's your question, Lisa? No, there there is no question left at the moment. Yeah, That's, but you can I, ask I a question. I don't have a question, I'm afraid. Oh, you, you could ask, you know, why my screen is green, too much, right? Uh, too <laughs> yeah. much, Lisa, for exactly. example. Why is, why is the color green of the tank? Yeah. yeah, this is actually, I don't know, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm using a oh my Z shell and it was green and a green screen sounds cool. Oh, I know it. And, and back then, you know, you, you remember the Matrix movie? It yeah, was also right. green. And I say, okay, then you know, I'm, I'm Matrix compatible and this, why not? Right. So this, and, and um, so this is the explanation. So now we have complete redeployment of the entire thing. So if we go here and what was it? This was JCon. So we have JCon and the answer is. Goodbye, hopefully. Goodbye. And the hello. Hello is hello, JCon. And JCon isn't goodbye. So, as promised, I answered the question with source code. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Georg uh, said better the screen is green than the face or even blue, right? Um, yeah. So, it is working. You can have as many endpoints. There's no limitation. So, just do it. And um, all the all the templates you saw are cloned from my GitHub, so there is no preparation, everything from scratch. So um, if there are no questions left, we are done. I'm over time anyway, I would say. And uh, so, uh, what I have no idea what Spring Cloud function is doing, but what Quarkus does, it reads the the JSON event and without reflection, it calls the JaxRes endpoint. So this is this happens behind the scenes. Is there? curl t script uh, on github uh, no which uh, curl t but it is ah 
but uh, I can show you what it is. So there is a format. It looks like this. And if you, this is uh, comes from from curl, and with that you have the basic, the basic performance. And it's not on GitHub, but maybe I can also post something here. I cannot. Wait a sec. There is a last question coming up. Oh, up. That this is uh, now. It is you have the script. So, uh, no, uh, is Java now available on AWS for all services like Pass or only Lambda? Uh, I don't know what you mean by platform as a service because in Docker you can do whatever you like. On Lambda is available. Code deploy is not available yet. And um, and uh, yeah, I don't know what you mean by pass because pass is usually Docker, and with Docker you can do whatever you like. Lambda is harder because in Lambda there is no Docker; you just you just relying that that AWS installs Java twenty one for you. Okay, so you have the template. Ah, Elastic Beanstalk. Uh, Elastic Beanstalk is a little bit old. <laughs> I don't know it, but um. But on App Run, it should work because we have own Docker container. Thank you a lot. I'm over time, uh, and um, we should get, get, give you know the next speaker more time. So um, thank you a lot. See you in Köln maybe or next year at the JCon World. And if you have any questions left, Airhex TV first Monday of the month. Ask me whatever you like, and we own a fun or join Discord Airhex Discord. You can also ask me questions. But please don't write me any technical emails because you know emails are terrible. To answer and if you like see you at a workshop actually we'll call it all the time and it's called uh airhex live is the workshop airhex live airhex live are the workshops and airhex industries all the links thank you a lot and see you next time